Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. So today's video is kind of funny because today, uh, after work, uh, I knew we were going to be filming tonight. Jamie and I filmed a Beyonder episode earlier. Well, I knew we were going to be filming, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a cocktail. And I don't make cocktails very often. I, I love whiskey. I just want to drink whiskey. But I'm like, I'm going to drink. I had the hankering for a dirty martini. And so I went, and I, I made a dirty martini. And I drank about half of it. And I liked the first half of it. And after that, it was kind of like done with it. And that just reminded me that I would just rather go drink bourbon. <laughs> so uh, anyway, tonight we are filming uh, what I'm going to film and talk to you about tonight. Six bottles of whiskey that I'm drinking right now. These are six bottles of bourbon. They're all bourbons? No, there's five bourbons and one light whiskey. I love them. They're really, really good. These are my go-to bottles, six go-to bottles right now for, what are we in? Uh, we'll call it spring of 2024. If you end up enjoying this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. It would mean so much. It's super helpful when you subscribe to the channel. Just letting you know that. But first up tonight, we have a bottle. We've talked about it a lot here on Whiskey Row, and this is 13th Colony Southern Bourbon coming in at, what is the thing, 95 proof. It's really, really good. Let's pour some up. Now, super excited. This one was signed by Graham, the master distiller down there. And on the nose, there's caramel, vanilla, a little carrot cake. A little bit of a mild apricot, ever so faint. On the palate, there's a nice oak char, a little bit of that caramel coming through, a little bit of that apricot coming through, a little bit of a fresh floral, fruity combination with some nice sweet notes. There's a nice oak backbone as well. It's a really, really nice sipper for about, you know, $35, what, $35, $40 these days. And if I'm looking for something that's just light, easy, sippable, it's hard to complain about this thing. This is a great, great bottle. Next up tonight, Buffalo Trace goodness. This is Eagle Rare 10 year coming in at 90 proof. It is a tremendous, tremendous, delicious bottle, tremendously delicious bottle for about $45, $40, $45. I know some people leaving comments, it costs 80 where you live. I'm sorry, it sucks. Here in Virginia, it's price controlled, although I haven't bought one here in Virginia for a while. Um, I've been getting all mine lately down in Georgia for about $45. So not complaining at all. On the nose, it's got that Buffalo Trace berry thing, but it really kind of jumps out with this delicious kind of sweet char from that 10-year aging. Really, really pleasant. Big fan of the nose and a big fan of the palate as well. You get a little bit of those delicious, delicious age notes. Very, very mild to ten, teeny bit of tobacco spice. Just a hint of it. A little musty barrel. Really sweet caramels going on. Overall, this is a tremendous sipper, $45. Obviously, it's allocated. Obviously, it's hard to find. Normally, I wouldn't include this in what I'm sipping just because it, there's not many like allocated bottles that I sip very often like for just my go-to bottles because they're hard to replace. But Eagle Rare is one that I've been fortunate enough to get a bunch of extra bottles. So I, you know, I, I'm willing to sip on it and enjoy it. And when I'm out, I'm out. And I'll live with it. But overall, this is a tremendous bottle. It's one of the best bottles you can get for $45-ish, $40, $45 if you can find it. And I know it's a hard, it's a tall ask. I totally understand it. Um, if you're mad at me for it, leave a comment below. I love to talk to you about it. I'm mad about it, too. I hate the allocated bourbon hunt thing these days. It's really, really frustrating. Enough of that. I'm off my soapbox. Let's move on to the next bottle. Up next is a bottle I just got, and I'm already in love with it, and I'm already trying to drink it, and also not drink it at the same time. This is an Old Forester Blue Label. So what that means, Old Forester puts out two different barrel picks. They have Black Label picks and Blue Label picks. The Black Label picks are 100 proof, and the Blue Label picks are barrel proof. So whatever the barrel proof is, this particular one coming in at 126.2 proof. I was at this pick for this bottle. This was done by Broughton Street Liquors down in Savannah. Neil, how you doing, man? Uh, great store. If you're ever down in old historic Savannah, got to swing by Broughton Street Liquor. Tell Neil I said hello. Swing by, go on in there. If you're ever looking for a great, uh, great getaway vacation for your life, uh, for your wife, take her to uh, historic downtown Savannah, Georgia. Fly her in. Just beautiful hotels down there. Great shopping, everything else, and it'll give you an excuse to go to Neil's store because it's amazing. I love it. All right. The thing I love about this pick, and the reason why this is in this list, is because a lot of the Old Forester Blue labels, in my opinion, are super, super hot. They're young, hot, wild animals. 
And this particular one is a little bit more muted. It's got a delicious age note, which is really shocking for, you know, these come in about five years these days. Blue Label are about five years. Not all, but about that. And this one is a little bit musty, like this delicious barrel must. Really nice and sweet caramel vanilla notes. Again, a little bit of caramel, very faint nuttiness, a nice floral quality, a fresh floral quality coming out of an old Forrester Blue Label. Absolutely tremendous. Super, super excited to get a bottle of it. Very excited to participate in the pick as well. But obviously this is one that is close, near and dear to my heart and uh, one that I really, really enjoy sipping. And like I said at the beginning of the, the talking about this bottle, it's one that I love to sip and also hate to sip because I only have one bottle that I don't want to run out. We're halfway done. And next up is a bottle I got not too long ago, but I've kind of fallen in love with. It's High West Cask Strength Bourbon. This thing is coming in at a, what is it at? 60.7 APV or 50.7. I can't even read it. My eyes are too bad. This is this was a pick for Habersham Beverage down in Savannah as well. Excited to uh, get a hold of this one. Uh, thank you to some uh, great Patreons down in Savannah for helping me get a hold of this friggin' delicious bottle. So I loved High West when I first got into bourbon. Um, finally got a hold of my Midwinter Night's Dram, my first one. It was Act Six years ago. And, you know, since then, I've loved some of the stuff they've done. It's been really, really nice. And uh, then they, you know, some stuff changed and I just didn't love it as much. But this, this is a tremendously delicious bottle. On the nose, it's just super floral and fresh. A nice proof point on the nose. So I'm guessing that was 60.7 because that 50, that'd be way too low for the nose. Caramel, fruit, little mild grain. Oh, it smells really nice. They're just absolutely delicious, like dark candied caramel on the palate that carries into the finish that is just tremendously bonkers good. There is a very nice oak presence as well, a little bit of char in there, but between the proof, the spice, the sweet caramel, extraordinarily well balanced. This is one that's definitely a, a, a knockout bottle for me and one I'm super excited and definitely sipping on uh, when I can. Next is not a bourbon, but it's still tremendously delicious. This is a Penelope American light whiskey, 15 years age dated, coming in at 128.4 proof. This is a Founders Reserve barrel. Now, it does not have to be Penelope. This is basically just MGP distilled in Indiana. And as much as I love this Penelope bottle, you could really get any kind of like 15, 16 year old MGP American light whiskey, and it would probably be just as delicious. I know I've gotten a pick from Rye 3 that was a uh, 16 year MGP, and it was phenomenal. So one of the great secrets in the bourbon world, if you're not into uh, American light whiskey, the Canadian stuff can be really, really good too. But if you can get that 15, 16 year goodness out of Indiana, definitely, definitely recommend. Let me tell you about it. On the nose, it's got this funky, musty, agey barrel. So good on the nose. Wow. Uh, this is one of those things where, like, the nose on this is something that you only get in, like, really, really special bourbons. Because it's just, like, phenomenal. So it's, it's like, uh, frosted carrot cake, musty barrel, little bit of a fruitiness almost. Very nice. Very, very sweet. The proof point, obviously, 128 proof. It's it's all there. It does not drink hot at all. And most of this, the uh, the 15-ish, 16-ish year MGPs that I've had, sourced MGPs, they are not like super hot. They're super approachable. Very, very dangerous bottles, frankly, to get into. So uh, if uh, if you haven't gotten into the light whiskey game, there's some tremendously good light whiskey coming out of MGP. Uh, Seagram's and MGP and Seagram's, uh, and then also into uh, Canada. So definitely a simple bottle, uh, and I'm just digging the light whiskey these days. <laughs> Last up, a bottle that I have fallen in love with and I'm sipping all the time, Nashville Barrel Company. Uh, this is our latest pick. It's coming out in a couple weeks. I'm not exactly sure when. Coming in at 115 <laughs> proof. Super, super sippable bottle. Um, it, it, it reminds me somewhat of an E.H. Taylor uh, single barrel. 
uh, a little bit proofier, a little more caramel, and the uh, raspberries dialed down a little bit, but I actually think it's better. Um, anyway, and that's not to say that our pick is anything particularly special, uh, but it's more about what Nashville Barrel Company is doing because some of the stuff that Nashville Barrel Company does is tremendously good. This is a seven-year MGP that goes through a process at Nashville Barrel that I think is just phenomenal. I mean, it, it's great. And I know a, a lot of other YouTube channels have done picks from Nashville Barrel and we've had a lot of their picks and they're phenomenal as well. So it's not like ours is a special thing. So anyway, I, I'm proud of it, but it's not like I made the whiskey or aged it or anything else. So it's Nashville Barrel and uh, just fortunate enough to share it with y'all. On the nose, it's very, very candy caramel, but it's like a darker candy caramel, like an overly cooked candy caramel, some vanilla, and a little bit of like a, a raspberry jam, like a, a cooked raspberry jam. Oh my God. On the palate is like cooked vanilla. It's creamy. There's a little bit of a, a berry note that kind of it does have, give you that kind of E.H. Taylor single barrel vibe. 115 proof, super sippable, no issues on the proof. There's this almost a little bit of like a like a strawberry shortcake or raspberry shortcake vibe, like creamy whipped cream with a sponge cake and some fresh raspberries. It's tremendous. Really, really good. Super excited for that to come out in a couple of weeks for our Patreon community. But these are six bottles that I just tend to reach for when I come in the speakeasy when I'm not filming. Now, obviously, when I'm filming, I'm filming other stuff and trying to create interesting content for all of you. And, and if you're enjoying the content, please, please subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. Super helpful. And, and like the video as well, if, if this is, is, is entertaining to you. Um, but yeah, these are six that I think are tremendous, tremendous go-to bottles that I'm sipping on these days. What are you sipping on these days? What are some of your go-to bottles? Are they, you know, are you, are you enjoying some, some sweet, 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 delicious bourbons these days? Or are you drinking something else? Anyway, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you all of y'all. I'll try to answer your comments as quickly as I can. But with uh, all that said, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, mm, find a bottle you love. <laughs>